The Ryan Goodman and Tangway podcast is brought to you by FanDuel, the exclusive wagering partner of the CLNS Media Network. Okay, everybody, here we go. It's time for Bob Ryan, Jeff Goodman, Tangway along for the ride. Zoom and podcast. Of course, we are brought to you by FanDuel. Baseball season is in full swing. No better place to get in on the action than FanDuel, and America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get a no-sweat first bet of up to $1,000. More details on that coming right up. Okay, guys, let's get to it. Bob's favorite player, his favorite team this year, uh, other than Sacramento, but you've always been a Denver Nuggets fan. Finally, for the city of Denver, they get a title in the NBA. Just your thoughts on on, on this team in this series. Uh, my general thoughts are that we had a winner and we had a team that didn't win and is not I would never classify as a loser. Uh, and, you know, I know that's semantics and it's, it sounds goody goody, but I truly believe it. Uh, my quest when I'm not in an, involved in a rooting interest in sports, right? I root for the Celtics, okay? I want them to win. I root for the Red Sox. I root for the Patriots. I root for the Bruins. I root for BC. You know, I, 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 I root. So rooting is one thing. But if I'm not rooting for a team, if I'm just observing, you know, as a fan of a sport, I want what I call justice. You know, I don't want bad refereeing. I don't want you know, unfortunate injuries at the wrong time. I, I want everybody to have their fair shot. I want, you know, teams to get the, and justice to be served by the team that should win, win. The team that should have won the NBA championship won. Yeah. The Heats have, are the most noble losers or, or non-winners I can remember. What they did should not be dismissed. It was amazing. They lost their arguably their second best player, maybe their third, bam, maybe, you know, uh, immediately. And they still up, knocked off a one and a two and went all the ways. But they, I think they were tremendous. And I, I admire what they did, what they did. And, 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 I, and I just want to establish that. So the, the, we have a worthy champion. We have a worthy finalist. Uh, justice was served. And, and, you know, we all got to watch Djokovic do his, do his thing. And, and, and um, we, we saw well, the jo- Jokic and Djokovic both did their thing. Yeah, I said Jokic. I said, yeah, Jokic. Right. <laughs> so we watch him do his thing, and it was fun. So now I'm pleased as a fan of the sport, as a guy who's covered the NBA since 1969. I I, I think it was a worthy playoffs, and, and and I'm happy that the right team won. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. I mean, it's hard to argue. They're, they were just – they were likable too. Like Denver's a, a likable team in, in almost every way from – Uh, You know, the coach who went to Worcester Academy, Michael Malone, from the big guy who got all the attention, Jamal Murray, who had missed, you know, the postseason because of injuries the last couple of years, Michael Porter, who was supposed to be a number one overall pick, but had all those injuries in in, in college and uh, even when he got to the NBA, Bruce Brown, Mm. you know, you know, Contavious Caldwell Pope, who kind of was, you know, refound his his shooting stroke in denver it was just yeah it's a it's a a really fun team to watch they didn't celebrate like a lot of other teams although the parade they did they had their fun in the parade right, they, they showed, saved it up yeah yeah they, they didn't post game they were kind of boring but in the parade man they were drinking michael malone was hilarious in the post <laughs> in, in i the know there's a lot of social media out there on him it's great I, I you know i didn't know he went to uh, worcester academy yeah yeah uh and i guess i'm a fan i knew daddy uh, and i uh, you know, I don't know Michael, but I know I knew Brendan and and I'm happy for the, both of them in, in that regard. Yeah, there's so much to like about about the way they about the way they did it. And and then you, the games, the contributions they got, the key contributions they got from auxiliary players when they needed it. Brown was one game. Brown, the other Brown, B-R-A-U-N, the other Brown had two very significant contribution yes. games in the finals. Uh, I didn't know how good he was. Quite being oh, he's got a lot of shit to his game. That's the one thing you look at him and you're like, oh, "Come on, this this kid looks like he's you know 18 years old. Uh, he's <laughs> probably not not that much older than that." But man, he's got. I remember talking to guys at the Final Four a couple of years ago when they won it all, and I asked, "I was like, who has the most swagger on this team?" And everybody in Kansas was like, "Christian uh, Brown, yeah. not even close." So, so I mean, that was good. And and uh, you know, then of course the flip side. We'll never know what would have happened if if the if the, uh, the Heat had had Tyler Hero. Uh, you know they got you know they had moments. Guys stepped up and Rob, our our guy Duncan Robinson had a couple mo- mo- games where he you know replaced Hero very nicely. But still, it's too bad it happened. But but they fought through it admirably. And I'll tell you who's 
who went up in my esteem. I, I, I never had watched him that extensively as you do when you see throughout the prolonged playoffs to know how good Bam is. Bam's a damn good player. And, and he's got a, and he's got a, a, a versatile game. I didn't realize he was this good a passer. We, uh, you know, um, so I came out with a lot of admiration for Bam out of bio. Well, I think what Bam has, has struggled with is we, we had very high expectations for him. And I think you, and Jeff, you can comment on this because you've seen him for years. Once we've accepted what the player he is, you can appreciate yeah. him like Bob. Yeah, he's never going to be a guy that like dominates offensively game <clears throat> after game after game. He he can have his 25 one night, but he, you know, he's going to be good for you know 16, 18. That's that's generally what Bam is. Uh but he does everything well. And you know, I love Bam too. Like he just plays the game. Like he plays the game the right way. He's not bitching and moaning and complaining where a lot of guys like him would. Um, I, I just, I, I've always had a lot of respect for Bam uh, and kind of, again, how he goes about his business. So uh, is there anything hollow about Denver's championship? No, nah, zero, zero. I don't think so. I'll I mean, see. listen, three years ago, we were dealing with a bubble. So like, no, I, I, I don't think you can say anything hollow just because they got Miami in the, in the finals. Um, you know, they still took care of the Lakers with, you know, arguably one of the, you know, two greatest players ever to play the game uh, and swept them. So no, I, I think it's, it's well-earned, well-earned and deserved. And I think it's kind of, again, it's nice to, to have somebody new now uh, celebrating it and winning these titles these days, rather than the same old, same old, same old, which we had for a while. Well, have they said, is there a blueprint set by Denver, Bob, because we have seen in the past, it's all about the star. It's all about the, the sizzle. It's all about, you know, the, 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 the franchise player, which they certainly have. He just doesn't carry himself that way. You know, you know is, is there, is there a blueprint now in place the way Denver did it? No. And this is, this is the way the world we have come to live in. This isn't the world I inherited, you know, 50 years ago covering the league. We didn't have certain types of dialogues as we now have seem to have uh, already people worrying about who's going to win next year. And, and, and is there a dynasty gun possibility, blah, blah, blah. No, no. And, and your blueprint, I, I go back as far back as the, the 75 warriors. Okay. Who won with Rick Barry and, and, and the, and the Jordan heirs, basically what it was, you know, and, and everybody, you couldn't even, and, and people said, well, here's the blueprint at that. Yeah. You know, is that a blueprint? You're going to win with 10 guys. They went with 10 guys. That was, they, they, they uh, Rick Barry and nine guys platooning. That's, that's how they won. That's, the, the, the 75 Warriors upset the, the fair, heavily favored bullets. Okay. Uh, okay. No, it just no blueprint. It, it, it's, it, and then it was to put, remember about go back several years, guys, uh, you had to have three all-stars or, you know, the people said, and then it was two, it was two. Then it was three. No, that you, you, you put a team together the way you can put, put a team together. There's certain co common uh, components. Everybody wants to, at some degree, but first of all, where are you going to replicate Jokic? There you go. No replication for him. That's it. Right. He's, he's sui generis, okay? So I was just going to say that. There's only one of him. There's right. only one of him, and nobody's so, coming so like that's him. the end of the discussion. Unless you're going to trade for him? No. Go, hey, go, I, go. I have a good question for you, Bob. Do you see Jokic being somebody that eventually, like, right now, you've got a class of all-time great bigs that's, what, you know, Will, Kareem, Kareem and Russell. And then uh, you go the line until, and then there's another tier. Okay, for me, it's Shaq, the holy trinity of, of all time centers. And yep. then we have the, then then the arguments start. Fine, yep. like you know, fine. I think that's what Shaq is, Duncan. Well, Duncan, I don't call a center. He's a hybrid. All right, big. All right. I'm just saying big. Well, but, exactly. I mean, Jokic, but Jokic, it's so hard, Jeff. Now because Jokic is such a positionalist player, right? Yeah, I mean. He does the things that none of those guys ever did, which is pass the hell out of the ball. Well, I also don't think of him as a center. Like I just well, he's definitely him, a center, but I he's definitely a center because player. of his body. He's got to be a center. Like, yeah. like yes, he doesn't play like like a center, a traditional center, right? Because he can take the ball off the glass and go with it. Uh, but he's he, he's definitely a center. You know, I, I would say you know you're looking at a guy that's maybe cracked the top five or six bigs in NBA history already. Is that well, crazy? Well, it's on his way. It, it's, he's on his way. The point is, for me, you got to play about 10 years. If, you know, that's, that's he's played what, eight. He's played eight. 
No, he's getting there. He's got. Oh, he, oh, he would be if if this pace continues. You know, if he, he continues, to, I'm saying he has to win the championship every year. I'm not one of those guys. You know, but if this continues, sure, he's going to enter. He has to enter into into the discussion. This is a whole right. different type of player. This is a comedy. You know, and that's why we're not. I don't expect to see any more jokages because you can't. You're born with that vision. You're born with that instinct. You're born with. You know, you don't. You don't manufacture. Not and not everybody can't do the stuff he did. You know, it's just it, it, he's there's a little Walt in this game. There's a little somebody else in this game, and and yet he's a modern player because it, who had the first? What, what game was it? Six or, or I mean, was it actually? It wasn't ever game six, four or five when uh, they were not making. He made the first three of the night for them. You know, and he was about three feet behind the line. Right, something we've never seen. You know, before we don't have this is the new game. You know, you know, obviously Robert Parrish uh, was not taking three shots, three feet behind the arc. He had a he had a lot of range on his turnaround jumper, more amazing range, but not that much range. No, no, it's a different world now entirely. And don't expect to see any automatically think we're going to get a new uh, crop of jokages. No, he is special, fully special. Okay, time to take a break from the fellas here to tell you about FanDuel. As baseball is in full swing, and there's no better place to get in on the action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers. Get a no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars. That's up to one thousand dollars back in bonus bets. If your first bet doesn't win, just go to FanDuel.com/Boston to join today. Hey, taking a look at Major League Baseball right now. How about the How about the O's? How about Baltimore? The Orioles? Finally, they seem to be in a bit of a roll. So don't miss your chance to snag a no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars when you join FanDuel today. Just go to FanDuel.com/Boston to sign up. FanDuel is the official partner of Major League Baseball. All right, let's segue to the Celtics right now. And when you take a look at what Denver did, and you look at team chemistry, and that's something the Celtics did not have, Jeff. I'll start with you on this. Even though Brad was pretty tight-lipped and supported the team as is during his post-game press conference, did the Celtics have to take a hard look at the lack of chemistry on their team and make some moves? You know, I don't know if it's like lack of chemistry. I don't know if these guys like don't like each other. On floor chemistry. Yeah. I, well, I, I've said this for four years and well, three years really. And and again, for a little spell, it got better with Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. But again, they kind of reverted back. And and I really, and again, I'm going to sound like a, a, a guy that doesn't like Jalen Brown. It's not that I don't like Jalen Brown. I just, when I watch Jalen Brown, I don't see him making anybody else better. And and I never see him. Honestly, I want to do this, and I haven't. I want to track how many times he passed the ball to Jason Tatum each game in the playoffs. <laughs> it was such a low number. Like in my three, four, I mean, rarely, rarely did he pass it. I mean, there were times, if you really watch closely, Jalen Brown's got the ball in the break, and he's got Tatum on the left side, and he's got Marcus Smart on the right side. And consistently, he would give the ball to Marcus Smart instead of Tatum. And I'm like, dude, one guy is 6'10 and can finish over dudes. And the other guy is 6'2 and, like, maybe maybe he'll make the, the shot. But, like, this is an easy one. Just give it to Tatum and he's going to get to the line at worst case scenario. Probably going to dunk over the, the dude because it's three on one. I, I don't know. I just – I'm out on it. I think I'm out on it finally on, on the – that these guys are going to figure out how to play well – together I, I just don't think it's going to happen we've seen it now four years they've been the the cornerstone duo since Kyrie left and it hasn't really gotten any better so what makes any of us think it's all of a sudden going to get better in year five where they're the core guys what what yeah I I I'm reluctantly coming around to uh, you know that type of conclusion that because I, 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 I keep saying they don't need an infusion of talent. I still don't think they need an infusion of raw talent. But, but they, they, uh, they, they, and the thing is, their mistakes are correct. Here's what I think. If you've got mistakes, their omissions, their mistakes, everything's correctable. This is why I hesitate. I hesitate to say they should blow it up because the, you know, I, like, I, I will get to who I think I, I might you want to trade by in a minute. But I don't think you, I, it's just, May, is it stubborn? Am I, am I being stubborn? Uh, and anybody that subscribes to this theory being stubborn, that they still can get it. They can still because all they got to do is play differently, play right. Because they don't need raw talent. I don't think. 
I don't well, think they don't. Does. I think you're right, Bob. Well, to me, this was the year. Well, yeah, Bob, I mean, Milwaukee, that's... I mean, this was the year to do it because it was there for them. I mean, let's face it. OK, let's play a game, Bob, and I'll start with you on this. If the Celtics are cohesive on the floor, do they beat Denver? At playing their A game or A, but yeah, they could. They're right there with Denver. They're I capable think. of beating Denver if they it's play not, their A game. They totally are capable. Of, I, they are capable of beating Denver and winning the title. They're totally. I my belief was still that there was as they have as many good players as any team in the league, and 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 that there's and they they don't need an infusion of talent. But you know, yeah, Denver had a special player that that nobody can replicate. I understand that. And and but they're the best. Yes, if they they had moments, we've seen them, you know. But they're very uh, infrequent. They 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 the play the way they should play. They still won fifty seven games playing their way, you know. By the way, well, that's and, the frustrating uh, thing. I mean, Jeff, I think I'm not going to say it was an automatic, but if the Celtics play their A game and Jalen Brown does look to his left and give the ball to Jason Tatum. <laughs> they could have I'm not gonna say they would have beat Denver because Denver has a great player, right? Yeah. But it would have been a hell of a series. It could have gone seven. seven. No doubt. No doubt. No but, doubt. You know, again, it's just it's it's one of those things that you you just you look at Denver and, and the way they were put together. And you know, one of the things I'll say with Denver that they, they have and, and the Celtics, and I think Bob will agree with me on this one, if you're gonna keep playing the way you're playing the way Brad Stevens kind of implemented when, when he got the job of, of, you know, throwing up 30, 40 threes, you better have better three point shooters. You mm -hmm. better have like we agree with that. elite three point shooters. And they've got like, good, I know Al Horford, like some of those guys had career years, Horford, Brogdon, like Tatum can really shoot it when he gets going. We know that uh, he can have some awful games too. Jalen Brown's not a great shooter. He's a good shooter, but he's not a great shooter. Right, Derek White's not a great. Grant Williams is not a great shooter. Al Horford's really not a great shooter. He had a year. He had a year here. Uh, Marcus Smart, we know, isn't a very good shooter. So, like, if you're gonna play this way, I do feel like this is the time to 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 part ways with Marcus Smart. I, I think I'm there. I think I'm there. And I, I don't know if that's who you were alluding to, Bob, but I'd be curious to know if that's finally the guy that you're saying. You know what? I love him, but it's time. You know what they say about great minds, Jeff? Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, you you have you have <laughs> hit the jackpot. Yeah. I was yes. Uh, you know I have incessantly declared uh, myself as a, a a member of the Marcus Smart fan club. And is that stuff he does his way, uh, nobody else does. Not and but yes, I have reluctantly come to the conclusion that maybe we have to. He's tw he's twenty nine. He's not going to change. Uh, uh, you know he's. Uh, that maybe it, I, I don't know what other people think of him. I have no idea what his market value. That's the key, right? Because That's the key. An, I guess he's an odd player in a sense, you know, and and is a very different kind of player. And I don't know what the how many people are enamored of that, or if anyone's enamored of that. I don't know what his market. If they ran him up three years, possible, hey, he's would, got three whatever. years and sixty million on the table still. Hmm. It's not like, I mean, it, it's movable, but it's not a great contract like Robert Williams. You know, sign a deal. He's got three years at thirty six. Mm -hmm. that, that that's that's a big difference. Robert yeah. Williams, you could move easy. Marcus Smart, I'm sure you could find a team. And, and I think the thing with Marcus is again, he doesn't consistently make people. He, I know he can rack up assist numbers, but I think assist numbers these days, I don't, I don't <laughs> want to say they're like empty stats, but it's different than it used to be. Totally, they're different. a lot easier to get. Oh, oh you you're. You 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 know preaching to the old you know right an alpha choir here on that yeah. one. Uh, the, the concept of an assistant you know is is radically changed. It, yeah. you know, very easy to get uh, compared to what it was you know 50, 60, 70 years ago. I can tell you that. So anyway. I look at the type of assists. It's the type of assists you're giving guys, and like Marcus Smart again. I, I just feel like if they gave Tatum some help and gave him somebody or some bodies that made his life a little bit easier. So we, he wouldn't have to manufacture everything. You know, he'd be better. He'd be more efficient. Uh, everybody would be in turn because Tatum has, has done that. He's added that to his game where he makes people better. He makes the right decision. I don't think Jalen Brown, he rarely does it. And Mark is smart at times will do it. And then to me, if you trade smart, you just got to add somebody coming off the bench that can really, and, and Derek White can guard. I mean, he's, he showed, oh. He's an elite defender now. He's better than Marcus Smart 
today as a perimeter defender. The the question is, you know, what do you what do you replace Marcus Smart with? What do you what exactly. do you want for him? Yeah, yeah. And what about this hypothetical Chris Paul? Just would if if you if you had him, would he would, would he's would he's got enough left to and he could do him with what Paul does? You know, uh, it that could enhance the team. You know what he does, Bob. He always gets hurt in the postseason. That's what he does. <laughs> yeah, that's what he does. So I that. wouldn't touch him. I wouldn't okay, touch I'm him. Just, for I'm just putting it out there. That's all. Because yeah. I, 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 I first poo pooed it, and I thought, well, you know, you know, you know. Uh, but yeah, you're right. It's not worth it. No, you're right. Um, let's move oh. on. I think Bob, this is what you were alluding to. Were you talking about possibly a, a Bradley Beal, Beal trade? Well, well, I'm just. We know. No, I'm not. No, we have. I, I see all Bradley Beal discussions to our, our my my friend Mr. Goodman uh, yeah. there. He's the Bradley Beal guy. <laughs> I, 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 um, but no, I'm just talking about trading. Smart was my one thing. I'm, oh, I'm, that was it. Okay. Yeah, well, not not this. Let's get. But, but they won't want him. Like Washington would not want Marcus Smart. Right. If Washington is going to do anything, Gary, they're going to take expiring contracts. They're going to take picks, and they're going to take like a good young player. So that's what they're going to be looking for for Beal. The problem with Beal, too, for better or worse, actually, for Boston, is he's got that no-trade um, clause in his deal, the only one in the NBA. So he's going to handpick where he wants to go for the most part, and that's going to be Miami, Milwaukee, Boston, Philly. I just don't know if, if Boston's going to – like, I just don't know what they have. I don't know if Michael Winger, the new guy in, in Washington, really wants Jalen Brown because, again – you trade Beal for 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 Jalen Brown, you're not going to get a whole lot else, right? It's going to be pretty much, you know, Washington probably is to throw in something else to sweeten it up a little bit, and then Jalen Brown can walk in a year, mm. and he's probably going to walk from Washington in a year. So it that one doesn't make a lot of sense on yeah. on, on kind of both ends right now. Hey, now that it's summer, you might be looking for wholesome, convenient meals for sunny, active days. Factor America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit can help you fuel up fast with flavorful and nutritious ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and stay on track reaching your goals. Too busy with summer plants to cook, though? Well, make sure you remain on course and eating well. With Factor, you can skip the grocery store and skip the chopping, prepping, and cleaning up, too, while still getting the flavor and nutritionally quality you need. Nutritional quality you need, I should say. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. All you have to do is heat and enjoy, then get back outside and soak up this warm weather. Elevate eating at home with our new upscale surf and turf and surf and surf meal options like roasted garlic filet mignon and shrimp and Cajun spiced shrimp and salmon. And also budget wise, it's very good too. Cut back on takeout, get Factor instead. Factor is not only cheaper than takeout, but the meals are ready faster than restaurant delivery in just two minutes. So head to factormeals.com slash scribe50 and use your code scribe50 to get 50% off your first box. That's code scribe50 at factormeals.com slash scribe50 to get 50% off your first box. Well, let's play a game, though. Let's just play the, the let's play the, the roster game. Um, <clears throat> since we're dealing in sports conversation, which sometimes to the dismay of Mr. Ryan, is not in reality. But <laughs> let's play a game. Um, does Beal – how much better does Beal make the Celtics than the team we saw this year? So here's what I would say. You can make an argument, and I'll, I'll even – I won't even fight you on it, that Jalen Brown's a better player than Bradley Beal right now. I won't even fight you on it. I don't, if it's true, it's, it's, it's slim. It's slim. But what I will say is – Bradley Beal fits with this team, with Jason Tatum, better on and off the court, okay? And I'm not going to go to – people years ago killed me when I said, like, they're not hanging out together. They're not to, – to make it mean that, that Tatum and Brown aren't friendly. I, they're friends, but they're not boys. Beal and Tatum are not just boys. Tatum respects the hell out of Bradley Beal as an older brother. Okay, so you got that part of it, first of all that I think Beal can help Jason Tatum off the court, just feel better, feel more comfortable. You keep him in Boston longer. I I think that's part of it. You want to keep Jason Tatum happy. Mm -hmm. Number two on the court, 
Bradley Beal is a high IQ basketball player. I know people will push back and say, well, look at him. All he does is score. Well, here are the best players Bradley Beal's uh, played with um, over the years. John Wall, who was kind of a broken down John Wall at that point, right? If you remember. Um, and, and then you you had Russell Westbrook a, a couple of years ago for, I think, one year in, in 2021. His team in 2019 and 20, you ready for this? When he averaged 30 points a game, he averaged 30 points a game two straight years in 19 and 20 and 20 and 21. So just a couple of years ago, this was his, his players around best players. Rui Hachimura, who was then like a rookie. Yeah. Davis Bertans, Ish Smith, Troy Brown, and Thomas Bryant. That's yeah. what they surrounded. Yeah. What I'm trying to say is the dudes had nothing last year. His best players, Kyle Kuzma and Porzingis. Like, come on. What are we talking about here? The guy has had nothing around him of note and nothing around him that can help him because John Wall and Russ can't shoot the ball. Very good point. You know, and, and I can see why he, you know, we, we know he he wants out. He's going to be somewhere else next year, somewhere somehow. Uh, interesting. Now, it's a very good point. I it's, it's but it's, I I I'm, I was stubborn, but I'm I, I still think it's just the the whole issue with the Celtics thing is, do you think you can do what I think they need to do, which which is you know correct their mistakes, or are they unco- or are they not? It's just never going to happen. Uh, you know, and, and, and you're so right, Gar. This door was open this year. This was the this was. And they they came in with good health in the final in, in the playoffs, you know, which is a, a which is number one always for anybody uh, more than home court advantage. Have your best unit, and uh, the, and they and they didn't get it done. When and, Milwaukee uh, went down, when you wow. saw the you know the walk Milwaukee was hurt, I said this is it. You know, last year against Golden State, they got their feet wet. <clears throat> they were there. They had the experience, and I go, this is the year. No, yeah, yeah. Did, did you, Bogdan, oh, no, it, it was. Oh, then, you know, no. I mean, I was like, what do you guys want? That's why like, it was very frustrating. It's very frustrating as a fan. Very, um, this may be a stupid question, but I've asked them before. Jeff, you mentioned that Brown, you know, has that expiring contract where he'd be gone for a year. Is that, and I know you have to make the, the cap work and you have to match up the salaries. Does, is that attractive to Washington at all, where they could have a guy for a year then have the space? No, because you get nothing for Jalen Brown if he walks. That's the problem. They can't get have, nothing for Bradley oh, Beal. Okay. That, ultimately, right, that would right, be right, you get you nothing have, okay. for Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, 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 the cap room or having the money to spend or starting over is not attractive. Sure. Well, it is, but it isn't because, you know, they're not a free agent destination either. Right, okay. So they've got to get picks for Bradley Beal. They've got to get equity for Bradley Beal. Young players, picks that they can – they're going to probably start over. That's what they're going to try to do under this right. new guy. So, ultimately, again, he's going to he's going to want picks in any deal. He's going to want right. maybe an expiring contract, but a probably a bad expiring contract because he wants to stink again next year and and, and get a, a another top pick, add a couple picks through this, and then unload and, and have kind of a blank slate. Uh, let's get to another trade rumor, which I think, that, I mean, this is, to me, this has got some sizzle to it. And I don't know if it has legitimate legs, but the Zion rumor, Bob, I mean, the Pelicans have said they're not moving him. Uh, Windhorse had something, your old your old colleague, Jeff, oh. about, about Zion. Uh, Bob, how hard would you go after Zion? If you're See, a I'm hesitant. Um, Zion, to me, the the issue that was the issue that is the, forever the issue will always be the issue is is how long is that body going to allow him yep. to play yep. NBA basketball? And and it it's the it was the question coming in. Uh, you know, ever since he tore through the sneaker, <laughs> you know, we you you realize yeah. we're about something. I'm, I'm serious. You you do, you're dealing with something different here. That body is an odd. Uh, it, it's it worries me. I. I don't want. I I think he's going to be uh, in historically a, a footnote and a what if. Yeah. So that's it. I don't think he's it's going to be. We've seen the best of him and we know what it can be. But you talked to earlier about you know Chris Paul not being available for the playoffs. You got you think you're going to be able to rely on Zion Williamson being there when no, you need him? No, How can no, he do that? No, How can you no, say you that? You can't. I, I'm with you. I, I love Zion or I loved Zion um, when I really got a chance to kind of be around him. Uh, McDonald's game, Duke. 
like he was just a really likable kid. And uh, now, you know, you've heard some stuff early on in his career in New Orleans that, that he wasn't a good teammate. Uh, now you've got this stuff on social media with this woman that's not helping his case either. Uh, and you've got all the injuries. And you've got the fact that he can't shoot the ball, really. You know, that's the other part in today's day and age. Like, spacing. He can put up his numbers. That's great. Mm -hmm. But, like, what does that do for the rest of the team? Right, right. You right. know? So, I, I don't know. I, I Yeah, I wouldn't. I mean, for the money that Zion is is, is going to get, 38, 38, 38, 41 over the next four years, that's that's a lot of money to take on a guy that, honestly, you have no idea if he's going to be able to play. Okay, let's wrap it up with John Morant. Now, at the time people are watching this, the penalty may have been handed down. I think we can say this is it's going to be a big one. Uh, it's going to be well over 20 games. could be in the 20 and 30 range, but it's going to be substantial. Again, at the time of this recording, it hadn't been handed down. By the time you're watching this, it may be. But, Bob, does this send a message to the rest of the league uh, your thoughts on on this situation, which is really sad. I mean, it's you just know what? Really I have uh, learned over the years that uh, it's folly to think that messages are are, are received and, and 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 absorbed by people. Whatever, whether it, I go back to John Lucas uh, as in, in the drug era, and I couldn't believe that 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 John Lucas's downfall at the time of you know wouldn't have been a you know a shock to the rest of the league and other at, at that time. No, it wasn't. Believe me, guys did what they were going to do. Uh, I, I would need a little more proof that people are going to, you know, this, this gun thing uh, is is going to be heated. You know, it's just, it's just like gambling. You know, the the other thing that, that uh, uh, people are going to heed the, the the you know the problems here. So I don't know. I'm skeptical that that any message is going to be absorbed. Whatever the punishment is, I find this a fascinating it's a, a story in that Adam Silver had been coming out during the finals and saying we've got it done. We know what it's going to be. I'm I can, but I'm not going to let the world know now because I don't want to distract from the finals. I don't want to distract the news. I don't want that to be the news in the finals. So I think based on that, it's going to be pretty big. Don't you think? I do. I do. And, you know, my biggest thing for Ja is, is at some point, number one, do you have the people around him in Memphis to be able to help? Him, right. It's a young, young team. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't know. You need some adults in that room. And, and, and those are like, they're good kids, but they're young. So I just wonder if that's – it's on Memphis too now to go bring in some veterans, bring in some guys, you know, bring in a guy, pay him to just work with Ja. Like forget about the, the you know, former player, whatever. Go get, you know, again, when when Udonis Haslam retires here. Yeah. Just... <laughs> go get him in or somebody just like thinking, that. Just think right? – Right. Like on a 12 man roster, when, when the, the bottom two and three don't play anyway, most yeah. of the time, it'd be yeah. a very worthy uh, idea to have someone around like that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's going to be key for, for Jaws is, is in, and, and you got to put Let's, some of it on Memphis. Obviously, a lot of it on Ja. He's the one who screwed up here. Right. He's got to learn from his mistakes and grow up, but you got to give him the right people to be able to do it. Remember, I mean, this kid only went to school for a little while. He blew up at Murray State quickly, then blew up in the NBA quickly. It's a lot to handle quick, you know, like everything coming at you that quick. And, yeah, plenty of kids have done it and handled it much better than Ja has. Um, but I, you started with this, Gary. Like, I feel for Ja a little bit because we can't relate to what he's going through and gone through. And mm -hmm. we probably would have done some dumb shit, too. Let's well, be honest. Whatever you see, you're going to give – you're going to – extend him in the long run, you know, the much benefit doubt benefit of the, if you're his team uh, of you and that's, he's so damn good. Let's yes. just remember what we're talking about here. We're not talking, we're talking about Believe. a guy. That I remember having a discussion we were having earlier in the, in the, in the season back in the fall and about face of the league thing. And I threw out the uh, possibility of new face in the league, you know, John Morant in terms of how, you know, his appeal to young people as a player his electrifying style you know, is, is so he's such an enjoyable player to watch, an exciting player to watch, you know, and, and you know, so this, this is how good we're talking. We're talking a top of the line talent that's worth salvaging. Well, Jeff, I often base my opinion on your interaction with these players and you're pretty much a straight shooter. And if Jeff, if Jeff Goodman says good guy or bad guy, I believe it. And you've always said that this was a good guy yeah. and not just in basketball. I mean, in life period, 
when somebody that has a good heart runs into a tough time, whether it's alcohol related, emotionally related, whatever is going on in the kid's life that led him to the point yep. of getting on Instagram with a with a weapon, it's just sad. Yes. Because he's, the world is his oyster, you know? So, yeah. uh, and he's worth it. And, and if you're his buddies, if you're his real friends, you're not doing this shit with him. You're, right. you're, well, that's you're the key. protecting oh. him. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's just poor decision making. But again, he's young. He's young. I mean, listen, we all made poor decisions when we were that age. And we just didn't do it in front of the entire world with social media the way it is right now also. So, yeah, right, guys, great job as always. We will talk next week. Next week, NBA draft. We will get into it prior to the big night on Thursday. And as always, uh, Bob Ryan, Jeff Goodman, Tangway along for the ride podcast at Zoom. Brought to you by FanDuel. Baseball season is in full swing. There's no better place to get on the action than FanDuel. America's number one sports book. Right now, customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Just go to FanDuel.com slash Boston to join today. Gentlemen, until next week. 